Okay, today's video is going to take the computer vision line follow-up to the next level. We're going to learn how to read these green turn signals. Now, first of all, I'm going to explain some stuff I left out of my first video because I was trying to keep it shorter and a little bit more simpler. Now, you'll notice when I cut out my region of image, I cut out a strip right across the screen from the left-hand side to the right-hand side from 200 down to 250. Now normally when you wanted to cut something out going down from the left hand to the right right hand side, you'd normally put your X coordinate first and then your Y coordinate second. You can see here, this is the X coordinate second from 0 to 639 and the Y coordinate is first from 200 to 250. Now the reason for this is that most cameras don't work in an X, Y coordinate system they work in a rows and column. So they go across a row, detecting the column all the way across, and they come down to the next row going across. So when they output the data into an image array, it's in a row column format. So we have our row first, which is our Y coordinate, and then the column within the row second. So just realize when you are uh, reading the, the image array, the coordinate system is rows and columns, not X and Y. But when we use the functions to draw, CV turns the coordinate system around nicely for us. So when I draw a line, I put my X coordinate first, then my Y coordinate second of the start of the line, and then my X coordinate second first and my Y coordinate second. Now the other thing you'll notice is that when I was drawing colors, which is this next uh, set of variables out here, it's not in RGB, it's actually in BGR. So I've drawn a blue line here, but I've put 255 in the first channel, 0 in the second channel, and 0 in the third channel. One would think that that would draw a red line because, it, because you're thinking of RGB. But again, the camera captures in BGR. So blue's the first channel, green's the second channel, red's the last channel. Now, this is just a slightly modified version of the code we had before. Now, all I've done is because I'm going to start adding green stuff instead of just using the variable x, y, x, y, and w and h for my x, y coordinates and my width and my height. I've put underscore blk because I'm also now going to start having some x and y's of my green stuff and I'll use x underscore grm. And I've had to do that with all my variables. So when I read the contours here on this line here, instead of just image, contour, and hierarchy, I've done image underscore BLK, contours underscore BLK, hierarchy underscore BLK. So I know it's the ones for the black. Same with this line here, instead of being the length of contours, it's the length of contours underscore black. Same here, when I um, worked out the bounding rectangle, I brought back the variables X underscore BLK, and I got it from contours underscore BLK. Now before I was actually doing the calculation here to calculate, to calculate the X coordinate of the center of the bounding box. Now what I've done is I've added one more line that I've made a variable called center X underscore BLK and it's equal to the X coordinate of the bounding rectangle plus half the width of the bounding rectangle. So that gives me the center, center X. Let's get into looking at a bit of the code for finding the green sign. I've added another variable now called green sign to be equal to the in range of the whole image for the moment, not just the region of image. And that's the in range I've experimented with a little bit. And down here, before where I was showing the original image, I've turned that into a comment so the program won't run it. And I've added another line that just simply shows the green sign variable. And here it is here running. And you'll see that now it lights up quite well showing the green. You'll notice that I'm getting a bit of noise both from the gap and also from around the outside of the black line. That's because that will still be in range. When I tried to narrow down my range a little bit, it made the green signal sometimes not pick up quite well. But because these are all quite thin little lines, it will be quite easy for us to erode away. So this is the in range I'm going to use. Okay, now I've just added two more lines of code, just the code that erodes it away 
and dilates it back out for the same reason we did it with the black and I actually just copy and pasted the two lines above it and changed it to green sign. So when we watch this one in action, you'll see now the only thing that shows up in the binary green sign image is any green turn signals. Come across over here and have a look at that one. We've isolated the green turn signal. Okay, so more modifications to the code. I've now, instead of analysing the whole image, I'm just going to analyse our region of interest. What I've also done now is just done exactly the same as what I did for the black line. I am found the contours. I put GRN at the end of all of the variables instead of BLK. Same here. And then I do the same thing. If it finds a contour, then it gets a bounding rectangle, calculates the centre of that bounding rectangle, then it draws a line on the centre of the bounding rectangle, and this time I have done it at, instead of 255 in the blue channel, I've put 0 in the blue channel, 0 in the green channel, and 255 in the red channel. So that will give me a red line now. So if I come down here and look at my code, when it's on the black line, it when it sees the black line, it's put it in the black line, when it comes up here, comes up as soon as the green gets within the region of in image, it will put a red line there in the region of image. And no matter where it is, it will always be in the center of the green. Okay, just a few more lines of code to clean everything up at the end. I've added another variable called green detected. When it first enters the loop, it sets it to false. If it comes down, when it comes down here, if it does find a green contour, then it sets it to true. After we get down here, we're going to say if green detected, so if it has found a green, then we're going to test to see whether the green center is larger than the black center. If it's larger, we're going to write the text turn right, else we're going to write the text turn left. If it hasn't detected green, then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate our error and put that on the screen. So our set point will be 320. That's because that's the center of the screen. It's 640 pixels wide. The error is equal to the center of the black minus your set point. I'm going to make a text variable. The text variable will be equal to error equals plus the string version of error. And I'm just going to write that to the screen. Obviously, when you do this, instead of writing it to the screen, that's going to be motor controls. So what you can see when we're here, it writes our error. As we move further across, our error becomes negative. As we move out this side of center, our error becomes positive. If I put it dead in the up, oh, dead in the center, just there, it will give us an error of zero because it's dead in the center. Right. Now, as we move forward here, as soon as that clicks to see a right turn, it stops telling us the error and it tells us to turn right. When it's not out, when there's no green inside the read of the image. It just gives us our error, gives us right turn. Come over here where we have a left hand turn. We'll do the same for the left hand turn. We have our error coming up, our error coming up. We hit a green turn. It now says turn left. Okay, the source code for all of this, the same as the other videos. I will put in the description of the a link in the description of the videos to the source code. Enjoy, boys and girls.